All of us are wired to appreciate natural beauty, if you will, and anybody, at any time in history, any culture, if you look at an ocean or a mountain or a beautiful forest scene, everybody appreciates that. I mean, it hits us fairly deep. We're wired that way. And when you see your planet that way, and, and it's some total from space, you know, all those senses uh, kind of get overwhelmed. First saw planet Earth from space, I'm still during the launch, outside the atmosphere of Earth, and we were over the Pacific Ocean, and just looking at that gorgeous blue, dotted with white clouds and the black of space. This impossibly blue planet and this impossibly black sky just kind of hanging out there, I mean, it, it is really, really breathtaking. Even though you've seen the Earth through movies, pictures, when you look at the Earth with your own eyes, changing very fast at the speed of eight kilometers per second, what you see is beautiful. You have tears in your eyes, uh, even if you are a tough person, you, you can't avoid becoming a, a child again. And we wish all humankind could experience this view of Earth. It is this perpetual, dynamic picture show that, that, again, you never get tired. Even six months into the flight, if you pass by a window, it's like a magnet that draws you to it. And you want to pick up a camera and take pictures of it. As we fly around the Earth, you know, every 92 minutes, the Earth is twisted around by about 13 degrees underneath us. So the next time you fly another orbit, of course, the Earth's moved around a bit, so you get yet another view, which is, I think, one of the reasons why it's so beautiful. It's entrancing. This constantly moving Earth is something that you know, nobody ever gets tired of looking at. You could spend hours a day for months looking out the window and never get tired of it. You could never learn all of the Earth, and the Earth is very dynamic. Things change with seasons. There's always lightning storms going on somewhere on the Earth at night, and you can never fail to see these lightning flashes. It lights up a whole circle of clouds around it, and that seems to set off another flash a few hundred miles away somewhere else. So you get a sort of of lightning, and then another bit somewhere else. Brrr, brrr. You can see the, the northern lights like you've never seen them before, which is just unbelievable from space because you're looking at a huge section of the geomagnetic field that produces the aurora. And the other big feature is city lights. Uh, you see the distribution of people on the planet based on the lights of the cities. It's, it's really striking. You know, we're only a couple hundred miles away. We're circling the planet, but just that change in perception, you know, just your ability to, to step back that far, uh, I think it prioritizes how you feel about the planet. believe that Earth is a spaceship. You can't avoid the comparison between Earth looking as a finite object in front of your eyes and your own spaceship, which is closed with limited resources. All humankind being part of the same unique crew. Certainly you know that there's conflict down there and certainly you know that there is pain and, and suffering and injustice, all these things that you know you certainly uh, feel strongly when you're, you're on the earth and you know that those are still there but that's replaced for a moment by how beautiful it is. I remember thinking I wish everybody could experience this view of their home planet so that maybe it would reprioritize what's important to them and make them less angry at their neighbors and more concerned about doing what they can so that we preserve the, the beautiful planet that we live on. look at that vastness of infinite stars and I think that's when you start to realize how insignificant not just you as an individual are but how insignificant the earth is how insignificant the whole human race actually is great to think about our place in that but then beyond you know what does that mean when you go further and further we like to wonder what our boundaries really are um, and I'd like to think we don't really have any boundaries